Hi, I'm Carmen Kittis, and I am here at Riley Blake today, and we are going to make this really fun baby size quilt. Now this quilt pattern is a very traditional double wedding ring, but we're going to be piecing this together in a very non-traditional way. And so this is going to be raw edge applique. So this project is going to be much quicker and turn out so cute. So what we need to get started, we need our background fabric. And so if you look at the quilt, this is the fabric that's behind all the arcs. So your background fabric, you need quilt backing, you need batting. Of course, we need our fabric for our cute little rings. And I'm using a roly poly with two and a half inch strips, which work perfect for this. And then you're going to need some fabric to cut out the, your um, solid squares. We're going to, you can use scissors or a rotary cutter, some spray starch. You want to have a ruler that is longer than nine inches long. I've got a water soluble glue stick. We have a few options for marking pens that we'll talk about. You're gonna have your pattern that you will print out for the fusible web and for the arc. And then we are using a fusible web. So heat and bond light, steam a seam, um, any, anyone will work just fine. And, so, and then of course we're gonna have a nice hot iron. I've got a little steam going in there, you might hear. And then our sewing machine is all threaded and ready to go. So. I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way and we are going to start out by cutting out these arcs. No, actually, let me rewind. We're going to start out by prepping the background first. I think that's going to be the easiest thing. So I have cut the back the background fabric. I've cut this background fabric. It's just the width of fabric. So that width is, you know, 40 to 42 inches wide and then a yard and a fourth long. So basically what that means is this quilt is going to turn out all kind of square-ish, right? And the one fun thing about this quilt is that it is going to be washed. With raw edge applique, we're gonna have these little, nice little raw edges. And so the one thing, if you don't remember anything else today, remember that this does not have to be perfect. You're cutting and everything else about this really does not have to be perfect and it's gonna turn out great. So I've got my fabric which comes off of the bolt already already pressed down the center, right? Um, if it wasn't centered, then you would like to, you wanna refold it and we're going to just press this and that spray starch is just gonna do a couple things. It's gonna just give this fabric just a little bit more body and then it's just gonna make everything we do a little bit easier. So now we're gonna go from the fold side here and we're gonna just fold up this whole piece this is where your ruler comes in. And we're gonna make sure that we start at one and we want to fold this up nine inches. And so, because basically what we're doing here is we are, instead of cutting out sing singular quilt blocks, separate quilt blocks, instead of cutting out the blocks, we are marking the blocks right on the fabric. So I've got this folded at nine inches. This is kind of why I like to use the steam. And we're gonna just press this little piece of lint. And then we're gonna fold this up, keep going all the way down. So remember that that center seam is already marked. We're gonna come up here. Let's get my ruler, let's just double check that we are at nine inches. I'm gonna come back just a little smidge. And so we're right at nine inches. So this is, again, this is kind of why I'm gonna give this one little spritz. This is why I like to use the steam. I like to use a little bit of that starch. It's just gonna just make all these um, lines that you are ironing very visible. Okay, so all the way down. So now, you know that this is already nine inches. So we're just gonna turn this whole piece over and we're gonna fold this outer salvage edge back 
to just match the fold. Does that make sense? So now I know that we've got two sections that are nine inches. Give that a little bit of steam. Give it some memory. Come down. Fold the rest back. Just see how super exact I'm being? <laughs> to me, that's kind of the whole point. This is a great way to create Basically, we're creating a grid, I guess. And to me, this is so fun because we are eliminating that step where traditionally we would be cutting out and making all these separate quilt blocks. All right, so now I can just leave this folded just how it is, and we are going to fold it in half lengthwise, right? We're getting a few more layers here. So I'm gonna let the steam do a little bit of this work. And I love steam. All right, so that center is pressed and now we're gonna fold this one more time. Let me do it this way. Kind of helps to kind of just make sure that all those folds are nice and flat. Now we're gonna fold this back and make sure that it is, oh, that never happens. First time, that's nine inches, exactly. So now, of course, we do have a lot more layers here, right? So I'm gonna just give this a good press. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna press it from this side. We just really want to be able to see these lines and now this other end, I'm just gonna fold back. Because if I fold this back, then I know that this is also nine inches. And so, don't be uh, worried if these are not exact. Um, these lines are merely a suggestion <laughs> for where we want you to put these. Now this is pretty great. And so now you're gonna have your, all, your whole quilt is all mapped out exactly where these arcs are going to go. So I'm just gonna put this aside and what I want to show you that I've done is I've already done another piece. Isn't this fun? So your background can be, let me fling this out. There we go. So your background can be a cute print. It can be a solid, just the sky is the limit. And so what I've done on this one is I did the ironing but I have marked it with one of these marking pens. So that's kind of where these marking pens come in. You might just go by just your pressed lines or you can go ahead and mark it. So the pen that I used for that is a water soluble. And so they're gonna, it's gonna stay on there, which is really nice. And so this is the background. So you can see that we've got all the nine inch blocks here and, and then this, outside smaller area is just going to be that outer edge where we're gonna place these cute double wedding rings. Okay, I'm gonna fold this up for just a minute. And now let's prepare these arcs. So I really wanted to open up this roly-poly in front of you because isn't this the most fun part of this whole thing? of buying one of these beautiful little bundles and all these beautiful fabrics. This is my favorite part, when we get to open it up and just lay all these beautiful fabrics out. How fun is that? So these are all cut into two and a half inch strips. Let's see, oh, see, and I'm gonna pick my, let's pick these pretty little pink ones first. And so I am actually grabbing a couple of strips at a time. Now you can, cut as many layers as you are comfortable with. You know, I tend to probably cut a few more layers than I should, um, but I'm gonna do four layers of fabric right now. And I'm gonna move a couple of these things aside. So what we're creating are these arcs. See all these cute little, we can call them arcs or we can call them rings for the double wedding ring. So that's what we are creating and so you can use either a rotary cutter or 
you can use scissors. And one thing I'll say about a rotary cutter is a little bit easier when we have the stability of a ruler and we're cutting with a rotary cutter. So I actually kind of like to use scissors at this point. Now, one thing about our pattern for the arc is that, see how it fits just perfect on that two and a half inch square? It's almost like I planned it. Um, instead of putting a pin in this, which is gonna distort the, the pattern, I'm just putting a couple little dabs of the glue stick on the arc. And so if you just lay those down right there, they're just gonna stay put. That's, that would make it a lot easier to use a rotary cutter. But when we're cutting something like this, where we're not using a ruler, you just wanna be really aware of where your fingers are and where the blade is, right? And, but because we put a little bit of glue there, see how this is making it a lot easier to manage. And so we're just gonna cut. And remember that these do not need to be perfect, right? We're basically creating that arc shape. Now, one thing I wanna point out about the strip if you turn your pattern over this way to cut out the second set, and I've still got a little, maybe a little bit of glue. Let me just turn this. You know, you, you really wanna, you don't wanna cut this way away from you. We wanna try to preserve the fingers. And so if you turn the pattern the other way, so you can, you can really butt right up against where you cut before. So that helps you to be really efficient with the cutting. So again, I'm gonna turn this so we're not, I'm not cutting in a weird angle here. And so the other thing is if I have this little pattern, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, if I have the pattern glued to the fabric, it's a little bit easier to pick it up and cut it with scissors too. So whichever, whichever one you are more comfortable with, you can use. So we've got our, arc cut out and so obviously behind me you can see this is a very scrappy project which is another reason why I love these and so then we want to cut out this fusible web now what I did is I actually folded up how many layers two four six I just folded up a piece of this fusible web so that's it's shiny and and uh, this is where the fusible is and then it's has paper on the back. And so now I'm going to use the pattern for the fusible web. And we're gonna put a little bit of glue on there just to hold it in place. 10 times easier than trying to pin this. And so then I'm gonna just line this up. And again, there's not a, um, like a grain line or anything to this fusible web. So wherever you're laying your pattern piece on there, is just fine. Again, if you're using rotary cutter, you wanna be very aware of where your fingers are and where that blade is. I'm gonna turn this this way and then we're gonna cut out the bottom half. We're gonna trim those little ends. All right, see how exact? We did not have to be on that. And so now we've got all sorts of fun things. Okay, we're gonna move these patterns out of the way. So now we're gonna come over to the iron and we're gonna turn the arc that we cut out so that the wrong side is facing up. And I think it's kind of nice if you lay a few of them together. And now we're gonna take our arc piece that we cut out out of the fusible web and the shiny side is going to go down to the wrong side of the fabric. Now do you see that I've got this kind of centered and there's some raw edge sticking out on either end. That's fine. Now one thing I just want to point out is when I had cut out the little arc piece, this little end was a little bit, I'll move it here, it was a little bit long, because what I don't want to do is fuse this to my ironing board, right? So you just want the fusible web to be inside the arc. So let me just trim these a little bit while I got them here. I'm just making them a tiny bit shorter on the ends, because 
I was making it a little bit too long. So the shiny side is going to go down on the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm doing three of them here. And we're gonna bring that iron in. Let's get that centered, hang on a second. There we go. So kind of, I'm just coming in with the tip of the iron just to sort of set that where I want it to be. All right, and then I'm just gonna hold that iron, you know, three seconds or so, just to get those nice and fused. So you're gonna do this on all of the arcs, right? You're gonna do this on all the arcs for your whole project. Now let's get some of this stuff out of the way. See, I cannot wait to cut all of these fun pieces up. All right, so now let's bring in our background, right? So we're gonna bring in our marked background. So this is gonna be marked either by just your iron lines or if you choose, they can be marked with a a marking pen. Now one thing I will just say is do not use an ink pen, right? Don't use an ink pen and make sure that it's a pen that is for um, fabric. Um, the other thing to note, if you are using a pen uh, like the friction pen that is going to go away, the markings are going to go away when you iron them. Well, we are using an iron. So you can use a pen like that, but just be aware that uh, the lines are going to go away and so you might actually prefer one like that but if I say oh I need to iron this fabric and I put this on my my fabric then I'm going to iron away all my marking lines and so because this is going to be washed I really like to use a water soluble pen and so here I've got some of these fun little arcs and what you're going to do is you just peel off the paper and then, because we um, centered that fusible, that's still going to give us some nice little raw edges. Now here's my philosophy about scrappy. What I like to say about going scrappy is to just lay it down, and then after you get a whole section laid down, then look at it. Now, the other thing that's kind of nice is if you sort of spread out your fabrics a little bit, right, because we want to get a little bit of a variety. So some of these I already had taken the back off. So we're gonna just lay. So do you see what we're doing? We're just laying these arcs and they are just meeting up in the center. So this little outside edge that uh, is outside the, uh, the, the drawn block is just that little outside ring. And this is going to be the outside of the quilt. So one thing that's kind of fun to think about is that you could use, if you wanted to make a bigger quilt, you could use a wide back, one of the wide back fabrics. Um, another thing to, that's kind of fun to think about is different types of fabrics. So one thing about um, a batik fabric is a batik fabric is not is they don't really fray on the edges. And so a batik is kind of a neat idea. Okay, so obviously this does not need to be perfect. See how we're just kind of, these are just gonna be meeting up. Actually, I think this one might be cut wrong. Let's bring in another one. There we go. And so then we're gonna line these. Oh, I know what was missing is we needed another fabric right here. This is, this is kind of a nice thing too about this whole process is it's very visual, right? There we go, that was the look I was looking for. And so you're gonna create this. Here's what the corner is going to look like. And you're going to just lay out all these cute little arcs. Let's do one more and see how good we are. This is a good job if you've got some little kids that want to be helpers, they can take the backing off. So then I'm going to come in and again, we're not going to be ironing with our iron. I can always tell the ones of us that grew up 
ironing our clothes is we this is how we want to iron when we quilt so we're just going to lay this iron on here and we're just pressing this holding it in place now I've got the steam on where it's just kind of generating some steam I'm not pushing the burst of steam or the arcs might go flying isn't that so fun isn't this an easy way to piece and so you're going to just lay down these arcs now after you get the arcs laid down and of course you could just do this section by section we're going to notice on the quilt that at every intersection we've got this cute little I want to say diamond but we're actually using squares this is two and a half inch cut square for these nine inch blocks and on this I really like just using a glue stick and I'm just going to use my quilt as my base because if a little bit of glue gets on the front of my quilt this is starch based this quilt is going to get washed so it's no big deal so we're going to just kind of center this right here now again does not need to be perfect that I'm not even going to lift it up I started to and I'm not even going to so then at each of these intersections I like to do a little bit of glue stick. Part of the reason I like the glue stick more than um, more than doing the fusible web on these squares is because I want it to stay soft. After this is washed, um, you'll you can tell that this little inner part of the arc has been fused down. Oops, I put that the wrong way. There you go. You just lift that up there we go that's what it's supposed to look like and then just a nice dry iron but the squares if I don't put the fusible web underneath the squares to fuse them down then this whole section is going to stay nice and soft so that's a personal preference you can cut out some little squares of the fusible web um, and you can use those to fuse them down but I I like to keep it a little bit soft and so you're going to continue laying and fusing down the arcs on the whole quilt. And again, you get to kind of see what this looks like and just choose all your fun little fabrics. This is actually really cute to do out of just one fabric. You could just do one fabric for the arc and one fabric for your squares too. So sky is the limit. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna talk about the next step here. So one thing that I love about this project is I think a lot of times as quilters, many of us are um, just doing the piecing. We're just piecing the quilt tops. And so I, one thing I love about this project is it's really uh, maybe gets us out of our comfort zone a little bit because we can experience the whole, the whole thing and finish this whole quilt. And so after everything is all pieced down, now this is just a little, little uh, sample, right? This is just to show you this next step. And so it's, it's not all the way finished, but this is all, this is all fused down. So what you're going to do when your quilt top is all ready to go, you're gonna have your quilt top and then you're going to layer your batting now because this is going to be washed and it's going to be kind of a crinkly little soft quilt, I like to use, I call it like a cotton style. I'm going to use 100% cotton. I'm going to use an 80-20 blend. Um, this happens to be bamboo batting this in here. Um, but uh, just a thinner batting, I want to use this type of batting because it kind of crinkles up. If you use the polyester batting, it won't. So that's why I use this type. So we're going to layer the quilt top the batting and then the backing okay so your backing fabric and then what I like to do is if you can you'll have just a little bit extra of the batting and backing sticking out underneath now that doesn't always work because no remember that this quilt top was just the width of the fabric so your backing is going to be just the width of the fabric too but not to worry because you do have a little extra um, space out here with nothing so that's going to be just fine so all these layers are together and so when you get these together um, this is all pressed and so they're kind of just kind of just staying together right but if you want you can put in a few little safety pins 
throughout, if you do that, you sort of want to start at the center of the quilt. And, and I'm talking uh, like maybe every 10 or 12 inches. Basically, we're just kind of keeping these layers together um, because what we're doing is we're, you're going to be sewing the arcs down and quilting your quilt all at the same time. And so how fun is that? And so we wanted just a way to keep these together. Now, one other little tip when you are quilting a quilt with your sewing machine, my tip is to start at the middle of the quilt and then move out. And so you'd start at the middle of the quilt and do, um, well, what I'm going to show you next, but you'll move from the center over to one end and then start at the center and come. So you can kind of move, radiate out or you can just start in the middle and go down, but that way you're, it really helps to avoid any unwanted little, um, little uh, lumpy parts of this quilt. Okay, so we've got all of our layers. We're gonna get them together. I think, I think this is not gonna be too much in our way. Now we're gonna bring it over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to do this with just a regular straight stitch. Um, if some of you have really wanted to try free motion quilting, this is a really fun way to try that out. Let's move a little bit of this out of the way, right? It's just, this is starting to look like my sewing room here, so you can tell what my sewing room looks like. All right, so I've got white thread in here. It's white background. Um, my only suggestion with, because we are, you know, we're sewing the arcs down, but we're quilting the quilt at this point, and we're doing both things at the same time. And so I, my recommendation with the thread is just don't compete too much with your fabric. And so to me, white's perfect on this one. I have a you know pure white background, um, but just something like I probably wouldn't use like a dark navy blue thread on this, right? So we're kind of just not competing with the fabric. So here's the other thing to remember. Um, it does not matter if you cross over lines, if you sew the same area twice, this is very, very forgiving. I'm not even worried about doing a back stitch. And so I'm going to just stop. I'm going to pivot here. And I'm kind of going around this little square. But look, I'm right here. And so, well, let's see. Let me pivot one more time. And so I'm going to come up to here. But now I'm saying, you know what? I'm right on this arc. So I'm just going to keep going. Now I'm somewhere within a quarter of an inch away from the outer edge of that arc. Just one thing to keep in mind, if I'm really, really close to the edge of that arc, remember this is going to get washed. And so, um, oops, press her foot down. So, you know, just somewhere within. Now, I don't have a quarter inch piecing foot on this. You can if you want. But I'll show you one thing. We're just going to stop. I'm going to pivot. We're going to go this way. But then just because I want to finish out this square, I'm going to just move it back around. So one nice thing too is if I've got my little extension table on the sewing machine so I can see it. Okay, so the one thing also that I want to just show you here is since I've got this all on the machine and I'm sewing these arcs down, your other option is to maybe do a little bit of quilting in between and in the middle. And so one thing to remember is that what we are, what we're trying to accomplish here is just texture. This is totally looking like my sewing room. So I'm just quilting a straight line right through the middle. Now, if you've never done free motion quilting, this might be a fun time to try that, right? Um, this doesn't. This is actually a lot more neat than I would even worry about doing because it really does not need to be neat. I'm gonna make sure that arc is under there. Okay, so I'm gonna pivot one last time. And I just kind of want to show you, this is a little bit matching thread, but so this area right here, I actually dropped the feed dogs and just did a little free motion where you're moving the quilt. But if you're not comfortable with that, just pivot your sewing machine, do a little line or two in between, 
And I'll tell you, I think with this project, if all you did was sew the arcs and the squares down securely and you, wa and you uh, finished the quilt and washed it, I think you would just instantly have texture. I think you could get away with not even quilting the inner parts if you don't want to. So you're just gonna continue on. Um, one thing you do want to make sure of, or I guess what I should say is one thing you'll find out is when you wash this quilt, you're gonna find out whatever you did not sew down because <laughs> it's gonna be floating around in your washing machine. And so when this is all done, See, you know, okay, so when you're all finished with your whole quilt top, keep in mind that you have sewn all the arcs down, but you've also quilted your project. And so what I do for the finishing part of this project, um, you can actually sew the binding on first and then just throw the whole thing in the washing machine. That's what I did. Um, I, I just added the binding and then I just threw the whole thing in the wash. Um, every now and then you might have a few little long threads or a little bunched up little um, few threads. You're just gonna snip those off um, after it's all washed oh, and dried. So you're gonna put this in the washing machine just wash it normally, and then you're gonna throw it in the dryer. And so the dryer is what's gonna give it this super soft um, look. So you can uh, wash your quilt before you bind it, or you can do it after you bind it, either way. And so I hope that this raw edge applique gives you some fun ideas of um, making a baby quilt or even going on to bigger projects. And I hope it also gives you some fun practice with that, with actually quilting your quilt. So if you want to see more of my projects, check out my website is 10sisters.com. I am 10 Sisters Handicraft on Instagram and Carmen Geddes Quilts on Facebook. So thanks for joining me and happy sewing everybody. Mm -hmm.